let's create a three month strategy. All right, let's, I mean, a three month uh, roadmap, right? What I want you to do is be really honest with yourself about your studying. I mean, I can't tell you enough um, that, that that's really, that's really, really important about what you can do. I mean, some people have families, some people have kids, and or some people just need a little bit extra time, you know, and I don't think that you necessarily have to read everything. Some people feel the need to read everything, but if you're in the program, a lot of those videos are meant to for you to make the, the preparing easier. So if you're in the program already, and a lot of you guys, I've, um, I have had a strategy calls you and the way to best utilize the program is to watch the video, um, take some notes, read the chapter if you need to. Some people, uh, what they do is they, they speed read through the chapter or they scan through the chapter. Okay, what is it that I need to know, you know, to solidify my understanding? So they're reading it in a different way to make it easier for you, right? So if I went through a whole video and I talked about the anatomy and the kinematics of the hand and I broke up the, the hand components. I mean, I took that one page and I was like, okay, here's what I want you to think about the hand because this is how it's going to apply to you later. You need to know the thinner muscles, the central muscles, and then the hypo uh, thinner muscles. And then, um, and where they sit, where they start and insert and what is their job, right? And you have to consider the bones and the joints. And why do you need to know this? Because when this type of injury happens, these are the things that you need to consider, right? So in that one chapter, it's a huge chapter and it starts out, everyone gets stuck on chapter one. <laughs> Like, oh, where have you been? Like, well, I don't know if I'm a candidate for the hand exam prep program. Cause you said, you know, I've got the years, I've got the hours, but you said that I need to study already. And I was like, yeah, uh, well, it would, it would probably be beneficial. <laughs> if you're taking it in May, you kind of want to. So where are you at right now? They're like, chapter one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we can do that. If you cracked a whole book, you're gonna have to go fast, right? So some people ask me, some of the questions I get are like, well, if I join, how many hours, you know, do I need to study? But my, my question back to is like, how many hours do you need to study to feel prepared? You know, how many hours should I devote to it? Well, what are you willing to say yes to? And what are you willing to say no to? Because whatever you say yes to, you have to say no to something else. You know, we can't all be greedy right now. Can't be greedy, right? You wanna say yes to yourself. You wanna say yes to your career. You wanna say yes to becoming a certified hand therapist. I promise you, this is a very short span of time between now and May, right? The program starts February 2nd, ends the last week in April. And then the exam is given for two weeks in May, right? It's a very short period of time in your life, I promise. So what are you willing to say yes to and what are you going to say no to so that the yes is possible? Cannot set a goal for yourself of like, I'm going to sit for the May exam and not study. I don't care what program you sign up for. You can buy all of them. Sometimes people get on the program. They're like, I bought this book and this book and this book and I have this program and that program. And I actually, you're so confused because you have so many resources. I use two. Rehab is a hand to study from. Some people hate it. I, one of my um, past students, she was like, Wong, I can't do the, the rehab, I can't do it. That's why I bought your program because your videos. <laughs> and she goes, I study out of the black book. Great, if that works for you, great. The purple book is used for practicing questions. And there are specific times that's very useful to practice questions, not all the time. Right? If you haven't really studied anything, you're starting to practice questions and you feel lost, there's a reason, right? And everything in that purple book are, is quite, there's a great book, it's a great resource. You know, I studied off of myself, I use it as praxis, right? To help me think, um, to help me think about the questions, to help me practice how I should be reading the questions, to pace myself through the exam, right? 
But if you haven't read anything and you're going and hit, you're hitting that purple book, guess where that pu purple book is sending to you when you don't know an answer? The rehab of the hand. So then you're freaking all over the place, right? So let's let's chunk, just like we, we scheduled it out and we chunked your time, we're gonna chunk the topics, right? So that's our roadmap. So, where did I put my pen? All right, so that's our roadmap, right? So here is the, whoa, how do you, how do I do, um, the, <laughs> I'm not very good. I draw like sticks for bones and circles for wrists. <laughs> so here's the CHT, whoa, you know, this is in May, right? So just like any kind of roadmap, you know, I'm in Miami, I want to go to Disney. I want to, you know, use ways to map myself to Disney, right? How long is it going to take me? It's going to tell me which way to go faster. It's going to go tell me which way is more expensive. It's going to tell me which way if I want to stop and, and, and uh, check out all the little towns before I get to Orlando. It's going to take me a lot longer, right? But if I'm talking, I want to do a straight shot. I want to make sure I catch all the like cops. <laughs> So sometimes I speed and <laughs> not paying attention. <laughs> Wait, you said there are two things I use to study. Rehab of the hand and the purple book. Yes, the purple book is for questions, for practice questions. Um, so we're here in February. February, we have February, March. All right, so we have February, March, and April. And the way I break it up is I go two weeks, two weeks hands, two weeks wrists, two weeks tendons, one week burns and wounds, one week elbows, Two weeks um, shoulder and two weeks nerves. All right. So whether you're in the program, you're not in the program, I still recommend this. <laughs> but if you're in the program, you're gonna follow me. All right. So I chunk up the information because if you if you're everywhere, you're gonna feel unorganized and you're going to feel like you're never getting anything. Because to become a certified hand therapist, whether you treat it or you don't treat it, you need to know how to problem solve through it, how to critically think through it, problem solve it, and make a decision. So regardless of whether you've seen a uh, you know complex uh, crush injury, you're going to know how to think through it. And then eventually when you get one of those, you will have an opportunity to work through it, right? Because you have the skills, you really do, right? Or, or nerves even, you know? Some some therapists don't treat shoulders, but you need to know shoulders, right? You need to know it. Regardless of whether you treat or not, you need to know it. But some therapists don't even do burns and wounds. You still need to know it. You still need to know if you were to see it, how to think through it. So if this is our three month roadmap, right? So we have a map now of what needs to happen February, March, April to May, right? So everyone who's in the in the current program right now, this is what I'm recommending to you. If you're in the hand exam prep program right now, you should always be a week before me. So February 2nd, I'm going to go and I'm going to start talking hands. So two weeks of just hands. I picked the, the topics that people are stuck on. People send their questions in and, and um, I'll direct you. I'll make the topic that we're going to discuss. So I lecture on the Tuesday calls, right? Two weeks hands. So the reason why I'm gonna say you're always two weeks ahead of me is so that you can send your questions in. So you should be reading or preparing certain concepts to understand. And then as you're learning them, or as you look, then you're gonna do and practice your your purple book questions, right? Your re, wherever you get your practice questions at, 
you, you answer some of those practice questions and you should be sending me your questions. If you got the question wrong and you still don't understand why you got it wrong, if you got it right but you don't understand why you got it right, you should be sending your questions in. Because a lot of the answering the questions is about did you read the question correctly and are you thinking through the questions so that you can rule in certain answers and rule out certain answers and rule in others, right? So that you can pick the best possible answer on the exam, right? So we're gonna go two weeks hands and usually like hands and tendons are such big topics. Um, there's fractures, there's dislocations, there's fractured dislocations, there's non-surgical, there's surgical, there's digits, there's thumb. Thumb gets its own little time, right? You know, in a way, because thumb's really, really complex, right? Injuries to the thumb, you can have like uh, surgery, non-surgical, rheumatoid, you, you know, uh, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Like what's the cascade of injury that happens? You know, so as a certified hand therapist, you do need to know the cascade of effect. If someone has rheumatoid arthritis, you know, you have to think through what, what's going to happen if they start having thumb problems. And then well, if you do this surgery and then, then, you know, that fails and what do you need to do next? And then what do you need to do next? The same as wrist. Oh my God, wrist itself. Ligament injuries, forget it. Carpal injury, like bone injuries, ligament injuries non-surgical stuff, surgical stuff. The cascade of what happens with a wrist is terrible. You need to know when you're seeing progress, you're not seeing progress, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to test it, right? And you don't have to know everything. You really don't have to know everything because when you become a certified hand therapist, you know how to think through it and you know where in the book you can look one day when you get someone. I still look, it's okay, I still look. I like to double check. Let me double check that I'm right. <laughs> it's okay, right? But on the exam, you've got to be able to think that you have to remember certain things, right? Um, when do you recommend studying additional topics such as pediatrics, research, PANS, etc.? So, so pediatrics, um, I do cover in the exam prep program. I do a whole, I did a whole lecture on that. And it's very similar to adults. They're just smaller. And so there's key little nuances. And so I think the best thing to do is remember those key little nuances, right? But when you understand why something happens, it, it helps you to understand what happens next. Um, and in terms of PAMs and stuff like that, you just kind of need to know the basics. I don't, and research, I don't uh, focus on that a lot. I think it doesn't take that much time to go over those things and again i wouldn't um i wouldn't put a lot of like i wouldn't put too much stock in it so if you're reading something on the research on pams it's really like what do i need to know as a certified hand therapist to use pams right and really pams is not whether you use pams or not like i don't teach on whether i use it or not i just teach on like when would you consider when is the right time to use it what are the contraindications and so i tend not to cover those topics in the exam prep because we have so many big ones but you're gonna have to find little bits of time in there but the the exam is divided into um, domains of evaluation prognosis treatment like general knowledge and general knowledge is like a, you know the, the least amount of weight in there so you're gonna have to weigh it in terms of what do I actually need to know and is, is it going to need a lot of my time you might need to just brush up on it and then call it a day on it, right? Because other topics require more time and attention. Extensor tendons, you know, flexor tendons, what are the problems with it? The extensor hood mechanism alone, you have to understand the anatomy because there's a lot of problems that get caused that they look like they're in hands, like boutonniere, a swan neck and all those. Um, and there's a cascade of events that you have to know. So those topics, are a lot, like they weigh a lot more. Um, so you have to divide your attention. And then you're gonna do in March, burns and wounds. What are the most important things about burns and wounds? Does it matter if you treat it or not? You need to know how you would take care of an infection. You need to know about grafts. You need to know about flaps and that kind of stuff, right? Elbows, for sure. You have to understand certain things. Shoulders, you have to understand the biomechanics of it so that you know what is 
what is supposed to do, what your shoulder is supposed to do, and then therefore you'll know what is wrong when something happens, and then the cascade of events that happens with that. And one of the reasons why I leave nerves for last in the hand exam prep is because I think nerves, now nerves runs all through here, right? So as you're reading, you're going to get, you're going to get little uh, touches upon nerves. So when you start talking about, talk about hands and you talk about wrists, you know, the nerves go through there. You talk about elbows or, well, you know, certain considerations of nerves past the elbow. And so what are some of the complexities? But nerves, one of the reasons why I leave it at the end is because certain nerve injuries are just not that common. So unless you're working at a trauma center or a very specific doctor that does like nerve, tons of nerve stuff, you're not gonna see a ton of those, but you have to understand um, the nerve innervations, right? And then again, it's a cascade of uh, surgeries or injuries that, that happen because of a nerve injury. So tons of people get, get stuck on the brachial plexus, like, oh my God, I gotta draw, draw the brachial plexus. But really it's not so much about drawing and understanding the brachial, like memorizing the brachial plexus, but it's really about understanding which nerves come out that affect the shoulder, right? That affect the shoulder. Which nerve comes out of the cervical spine that affect the shoulder and now the shoulder doesn't, doesn't move as well. There are certain weaknesses and stuff. And then what happens when um, it comes down and it is lacerated or there's a compression injury and where? So the upper arm, the forearm, the hand. And so you need to memorize, like that's one of the big ones. You need to memorize the muscles in which the, um, the nerves innervate. You have to remember in the order in which it innervates, right? You have to memorize that. So I always leave that to the last because that is the hardest, you know, but it's possible to really understand a certain amount, memorize a certain amount so that you can pick the best answer. It's impossible to memorize every last little word. So if you understand concepts, I think it'll make it much, much easier for you. So that's the breakdown. That's that roadmap that you should be mapping out for yourself. So now you have the only three strategies in which you um, need to focus, right? And then you have the roadmap of how you should be studying, right? The topics that you can be studying. And now you have two choices, right? You have two choices. You can decide you're gonna do it alone, or you can join myself and some of the callers on here tonight and join the hand exam prep program, right? Who is this program not for? Well, it's not for somebody who just thinks that they're gonna purchase this program and somehow miraculously, uh, I help you pass. You definitely have to put the work in. If you just wanna dabble, this program might not be for you. But I tell you, if you're overwhelmed right now and you need some help, this program is it. You're going to come in here and feel a little bit overwhelmed, but I'm going to help you. <laughs> the first week or two is a little overwhelmed. I'm like, oh my God, there's so much information. <laughs> but there's a way of doing it so that you won't be, right? So I'm here. The support of the group is here. And uh, if you have questions, you um, all you have to do is send me, uh, send me a question. And then we get real focused on those topics. So in the week of hands, we'll, we'll only discuss hands. I won't start talking about elbows and stuff like that because it's going to confuse you, it's going to distract you, right? So we're only going to talk about that. So I know that there are some people who studied only off of one resource. Let's say I'm not going to name which resource it is, right? <laughs> but he, you know, he took the exam. He studied off this one resource because everyone said that this is like the resource to study off of. And um, he was all over the place and he had taken it several times and he didn't pass. Right. Um, and then he ended up enrolling to the program and he studied, you know, really got um, focus on the different topics. And what you want to do is you want to solidify that information that, you know, so it's not you're not running from topic to topic. Right. And he just took it. And he passed in November. He's the newest CHT in New York, I believe. So I got a bunch of people in New York, New Jersey, you know, there are CHTs. So but pretty much that's the way I teach. You know, if you're curious about how I teach, this is exactly how I teach. I'm a whiteboard person. I ask you to get your paper and pencil because that's how I am, paper and pencil. 
You gotta write, you gotta be engaged. I don't do PowerPoints. So if you're like, go on, send me your PowerPoints, I don't have any. Cause I expect you to take the notes because that's how you're going to learn. And I'm really about helping therapists become critical thinkers, problem solvers, and decision makers when it comes to any type of hand and arm case that comes your way, right? I also teach straight from the book. I don't start like, oh, well, I do it like this. I do it like that. I really try not to. I say, well, why, why would you do it this way versus that way? So I always use the example of, of ultrasound. I am not a fan of ultrasound. I do not use ultrasound. I know people love their ultrasound and all that stuff. I'm just not a fan. But I'm not going to tell you not to use it. If the question comes into play of when is the best time to use ultrasound on a, you know, uh, wrist, you know, distal radius, and the choices are there, you're going to pick the best time to use it, right? But you're going to need to know when the best time to use it. So if there's a like, while wow, it's open wood, incisions are still in there. No, that's not a good time to use ultrasound, right? <laughs> Rule out. <laughs> and then you're going to have to look at those other answers and say, when's the best time to use ultrasound? But it's not about me using it. It really is about what's the best answer for you to pick based on the choices they are giving you, right? So I had uh, someone who I was talking to said that, you know, she was also a part of another mentorship and, um, you know, they would get on calls weekly and stuff like that. And it was more about, oh, well, I do it this way. Or I do it that way. I am a therapist with 20 years of experience, but I will not put my opinion in it of like what you should or shouldn't do. It's really about like, how are you going to think through that problem regardless of your treatment method? 